Greetings and welcome to the White Tower of Hoeth. Today we will be looking at the new Age of Sigma Battle Forces for 2022, but from a Warhammer Fantasy perspective. So we'll be looking at them for usability for Warhammer Fantasy Battles. That's points with basic unit upgrades and so no magical banners or anything. We're using the maximum point build options, so how many points can we really cram out of these boxes? We'll be assuming box cost of £130, that's $210, and that's because that was the cost of the most expensive battlefalls last year. So let's start with the Daughters of Cain. These are quite obviously Dark Elves. So you get a Cauldron of Blood or a Blood Rack Shrine, you get five Meluzae Blood Sisters or Blood Stalkers, five Kinei Heart Renders or Life Takers, five Doomfire Warlocks, uh, warlocks who can also be assembled as Dark Riders, ten Witch Elves or Sisters of Slaughter. So let's look at the Cauldron of Blood. This You really have three different build options. So first you decide whether you want to build the Cauldron of Blood or the Blood Rack Shrine, that's the one with the Medusa on it. For points, it's beneficial to do the Cauldron of Blood. Uh, I would say Helebron is such an expensive miniature on her own that the uh, Cauldron does become sort of obsolete. It takes up your entire Lord slot for a 2,000 points game. Uh, so I would recommend putting... Um, Helebron on her own on foot and putting a death hag on the cauldron of blood uh, and taking the blood rack medusa as a single miniature uh, but you're of course free to do whatever you want uh, this kit is bloody amazing i should say as well so blood sisters or blood stalkers these came out after warhammer fantasy uh, but they could be used to convert or proxy cold one knights or dark riders um, or just use as a base for converting a Cult of Cain uh, themed lord or hero. The Canari I thought about, and I think these would make quite good harpies. Now the Doomfire Warlocks, or Dark Riders, uh, they can be built as either Dark Riders are core unit, uh, whereas Doomfire Warlocks are not. They are very similar in points value and both are completely valid in Warhammer Fantasy. And so Witch Elves, both of these can be built. Both of them are valid uh, options for Warhammer Fantasy. The miniatures, I think, came out in Warhammer Fantasy before um, the end times. I should say they're quite hard to stack up on a square basis, but, you know, do a bit of modelling, that should be fine. So let's look at value. So what you're getting is the Cauldron of Blood or the Blood Rock Shrine is £47.50 uh, and 675 points. The Five Meluse Blood Sisters, uh, £35 and I don't know how many points you would make out of that. You have Five Canary Heart Renders, that's 35 so that's 75 points. Doomfire Warlocks, £26, £135. The Witch Elves, £36 and 180 points. And this is all before any magical upgrades. So that's a total of £179.50. And you get a total saving then with a cost of 130 if that were the cost, uh, of 49.50. That would be a saving of 26.7%. Uh, and that's not a lot, I should say. Uh, but the point value you get out of those is 1065 That's points per pound it's 8.2 and that's not too bad so as we see if we put this on a on a we list you are quite heavy on the uh, lords and heroes part um but all in all i'd say this is a good way to start a thematic force none of these break the 25 percent rule for 2000 points so yeah, it's a bit top heavy, but if you really want those as your heroes, then you are golden. It's a good base for a melee centered or a, a canine themed list. It's got really good usability for fantasy with only one of the units really being necessary to convert uh, to use. It could be potentially a bit rare heavy, but again, that sort of depends on how you choose to build your miniatures. Um, it's mostly newer Warhammer Fantasy Battle models, 
So most of the models are Warhammer Fantasy, uh, but they are also from the very end, so 8th edition, uh, which means that the build quality is a bit higher than other Warhammer Fantasy uh, kits. The savings on it, however, is quite low. Uh, so all in all, I'd rate this a 7 out of 10 for Warhammer Fantasy. Let's have a look at the Uruk War Clans, or uh, the Orcs and Goblins uh, in this case. Uh, so that you get a Swamp or Scumdrek, uh, or a Snatcher Boss on Sludge Rigger Beast. You get Gobscrack, uh, the Mouth of Mork, or a Killer Boss on Corpse Ripper Vulture. You get 3 Man Skewer Bolt Boys, and 10 Gut Rippers. So the Sludge Raker Beast, I don't know really what to do with this. I suppose you could proxy it as a giant uh, or a chariot. It's a bit too low, probably, to be a giant. Uh, but if your opponent goes along with it, maybe. Um, I don't know, actually, what to do with this one. The Corpse Ripper Vulture, I think, is a bit easier. This is obviously a Wyvern. Uh, so you can make either a Great Shaman on Wyvern or a Warboss on Wyvern. And I think it's a pretty good proxy for that model. You'd be very... I think it's a very good proxy for that model. It's quite expensive to get the uh, uh, the old Warhammer Fantasy version of it. The Bolt Boys, I don't know really what to do. I suppose you could use them as conversion material. Um... They could probably proxy as archers, but you'd need a heck of a load of them. Uh, they could probably proxy as spear chuckers as well, uh, if you're going for a no goblins themed uh, list. Um, but I don't know really if this is where you want to put your money then. And you've got Gup Rippers. Uh, they make for Orc Boys, I would say. Um, that's 105 points when you put shields and, and command unit on them. Uh, and I mean, they're quite cool looking. But I would say that they are quite expensive uh, for a unit that you're probably going to want to run 30 plus units of. So in terms of value, you get the Swamp Boss or Snatcher Boss is 35 quid. The Gobsprack or Killer Boss on Corpse Ripper Vulture would be £90 and 350 points. The Manscure Bolt Boys is £30. The Gut Rippers are 3250 uh, so in total that's 187.50 so you get a saving of 57 pound uh, 50 um that's 30.7 percent that is better than the knight but i would say that it's less useful for for warhammer fantasy uh the only point value that you're sort of guaranteed in this is 455 so that give you quite a low point per pound value of 3.5 um, points per pound but again that's not in ca um, counting for the swamp boss or the uh, bolt boys uh, so again the the arm list is not really much of an arm list here because you're not getting an army are you? you're getting two units and some extras so it's entirely made up of uh, brand new Age of Sigma miniatures. I would say it's a little uh, expensive uh, for the extremely limited use it has for Warhammer Fantasy Battles. Uh, if you want to go for, for uh, Auric War Clans, I would go for Dominion, trying to find one of those boxes. It has way more value. Overall, I give this a 2 out of 10. Let's have a look at the Gloom Spike Gits. Uh, that's Orcs and Goblins, obviously. Uh, you get a Loon Boss and Giant Cave Squid, uh, two Mangler Squigs, ten Squig Hoppers or Boing Grub Bounders, and ten Squigs with two Squig Herders. The Loon Boss on Giant Cave Squid. Uh, Squig is obviously a Night Goblin War Boss on Great Cave Squig with a Spear, uh, and that's 98 point. He's basically already a modelled asset, or he is a modelled asset, I should say. You get the Mangler Squigs, that's two Mangler Squigs for 130 points. Uh, again, brand new model, but works a charm for the old army lists. You get Squig Hoppers, will be used as 10 Night Goblin Squig Hoppers, very straight on there, 120 points. And you get a Squig Herd. Uh, now, Squig Herds in Warhammer Fantasy, or at least 8th edition, um, you need them in 3 to 1 ratio. So for every um, 3 
squokes, you need one nice goblin. Uh, so you need to sort of source two extra herders somewhere, which I don't think is very hard to do if you're playing uh, night goblins. So that would make for four herders and ten squigs, that's 92 points. So all in all value, uh, you get a loom boss on giant cave squid, that's £24.98 points. The mangler squigs is £105 for 130 points. The squig hoppers is £32.50 for 120 points. And the squigs, uh, or the squig hoard, uh, is £30 for 92 points. So in total, that's 191.50 uh, for a savings of £61.50. Uh, and that's 32.1% savings. Uh, and the points value is 440 for this unupgraded. Uh, and the points per pound is very low, it's 3.4. Um, so you see the army list is not, again, not much of an army list. It's basically just a few night goblins. Uh, but then I suppose night goblins is a quite expensive horde army to begin with. So this is entirely made out of new Age of Sigma miniatures. But they're also entirely usable for uh, Warhammer Fantasy. So it has quite this clear Night Goblin and obviously Squig theme. I would say this is a very good base for an army. Um, if you want to have that Squig portion of your army, this is a good way to get that started. And then fill out with a bunch of normal Night Goblins. Uh, or it could be a very good addition to just any Orcs and Goblins army that feels they need a bit few more of those round red guys. It has a very low pound, uh, points for pound ratio, but then again, you're probably always going to have that if you're running Night Goblins. Uh, so all in all, I'd give this a solid 8 out of 10. So let's have a look at the Skaven. Uh, you get a Gracer on Screaming Bell or Plague Priest on Plague Furnace. You get a Warlock Bombardier. You get 3 Storm Fiends, 40 Clown Rats and 40 Plague Monks. The Screaming Bell or the Plague Furnace um, can be built as either. Uh, the good thing about this kit is that you're getting the model that you're not using. So if you build the Plague Priest on the Plague Furnace, uh, you get it's very easy to build the uh, Grace separately. And that way you get two heroes, really. Uh, I would build the Grace on the Screaming Bell. Uh, and that's also the, the uh, most points accurate or the one that you get most points for uh, and then keep the plague priest on the side um, but either one is viable you also get a warlock bombardier which would make a uh, warlock engineer uh, i think that would be a warlock augment uh, augmented weapon and that's 60 points but remember you can pack them up with a bunch of stuff so uh, a warlock engineer can really drag off in terms of points once you start giving them magic abilities and stuff. You have the Storm Fiends and you have two different routes for these. Uh, you could proxy them uh, as Rat Ogres um, or you can use them as Storm Fiends. Uh, the reason I, I give the other option is Storm Fiends came out in end times and aren't really well liked by everybody. I think the models are quite cool though. Uh, if you do build them as Storm Fiends it's 255 points. The Clan Rats uh, is sort of the basic unit for any Skaven uh, army, really. Uh, you get 40 of them with Command, Spears and Shields. That's 220 points. Uh, the Plague Monks, you get 40 of these as well. And putting Command Unit on that, assuming you want to keep them all in the same unit, that's 305 points. So, what's the value? The Screaming Bell or Plague Furnace is £42.50 for 540 points. The Warlock Bombardier is £17.50 for 60 points. The Storm Fiends is £42.50 for 255 points. The Clan Rats is £52 for 220 points. The Plague Monks is £52 for 305 points. In total, this is a value of £206.50, so you have a saving of £76.50, or 37%. That's quite high. And in terms of points, you have 1,560 points, or 12 points per pound. Uh, that's very high compared to what we've seen before. And... As an army list, again, this doesn't build an actual full army, but this is a very 
good way on the way there. Um, you do actually not break the 25% rule on any of these. Um, you're not really up in 25% with a core unit, but you're on your way there. So this would be a very good base for uh, an army. In terms of use, uh, I'd say this is a very good base for a Skaven army. Um, one downside is that it includes end time units, which is not well liked by everybody. You only have one post Warhammer Fantasy Battles uh, miniature, and that's the Warlock Bombardier. I would say that doesn't really stick out very much. It's not very clearly non Warhammer Fantasy model. Uh, it's very thematic, I would say, or it's semi thematic uh, with all the plague monks. And if you choose to build the plague furnace, that would make it even more thematic. Um, so it's a good start for a plague themed Skaven army. You have a very high point to pound ratio as well. Uh, so I'd give this a 9 out of 10 for Warhammer Fantasy use. Let's look at the Night Horns or Vampire Counts. So you get Lady Olinda, Maltok of Grief, a black uh, coach, you get 10 Bladegast Revenants, 10 Dreadscythe Harridans, and 10 Grimgast Reapers. Lady Olinda, I don't really know what to do with her. You could probably po proxy her as a monster or um, some sort of leader for a ghost theme army, but she does not have an equivalent in, in Warhammer Fantasy. The Black Coach is a unit in Warhammer Fantasy. This is an, a new sculpt, uh, much better than the old one, I would say. Um, but it's only 195 points. The Blade Guard Revenants, I would say you could probably proxy these as, you know, if you put several of them on the same base, you could make a Spirit Host. Uh, or if you want to play an entirely ghost army, you could make them Grave Guard. And then the Dreadscythe Harridans and Grimgast Reapers. I think that the uh, Dreadscythe Harridans look a little like uh, Tomb Banshees. And the Grimgast Reapers look a bit like Cairn Wraiths. So putting that together you could have 5 units of 2 Cairn Wraiths and 1 Tomb Banshee. And 5 Tomb Banshees. Not viable at all. Uh, but that would give you 1100 points. So all in all, Lady Alinda is £30, the Black Coach is £80 or 195 points, uh, the Blade Guards Revenants is £30, the Harridans and Reapers £60 together or 1,100 points. In total that's £200 for £70 uh, savings, that's 35%, which is quite high. Uh, in terms of points, that's uh, 1,295 or £10 uh, points per pound. However, this is not a viable list. You get far too much rare, op uh, too many rare options. Um, but I suppose you get plenty of material to build um, other vampire count ghost things. So this is entirely made out of uh, new Age of Sigma models. It has a good theme. It's mostly made out of usable miniatures in one way or another. Uh, it's not a very good base for an army, I would say. Um, perhaps as additions, if you want to go theme your army a bit more. It might be worth it for the Black Coach. If you really want that Black Coach, you might as well get this and get some stuff um, for just about £50. Um, it has very high point value, but it's very oddly distributed, so I wouldn't give it any points for that. I'd give it a 3 out of 10. And then we get to the Sylvaneth, or the Wood Elves. And here you have Drika Hamadrith, 3 Tree Lords, or Tree Lord Ancients, or Spirit of Jurthu. Uh, you get 10 Spite Revenants, or uh, Traver Revenants, and you get 16 Dryads. So Drika, you could proxy as a slightly shorter tree man or a tree kin uh, i'd say probably a tree man um or do whatever you know tree lords you have uh five different assembly options uh the variations of the same three characters uh the one with the highest point value is building durthu and a tree man ancient 
Um, note, however, that breaks the points allowance for a uh, for your lords if you're doing a 2,000 point list. Uh, so I would probably go for something else like Durthu and a tree man. Uh, but again, we're looking at the maximum points we can squeeze out of this. So for revenants, um, you could proxy these as dryads and put them amongst the other dryads or may use them as unit leaders. Uh, or you could have them as elites in a dryad themed list if you really don't want to use elf models. Um, these could probably come in a bit handy. You've got 16 dryads. And that's a Warhammer Fantasy unit in a Warhammer Fantasy number even. Uh, and that's 186 points if you put command on them. So value, what are we talking? Dreka is £36. The Tree Lords, £95 or 675 points. The Spike Revenants or Tree Revenants is £60. The Dryads, £30. And all in all, that is £211. Savings of £81 or 38.3%. That is very high. Points, you've got 861 uh, that are clearly marked out in uh, fantasy usable units. That's 6.6 .6 points per pound, which isn't too bad. And as we see here, as I said before, we break the allowance for lords, uh, but that could be mended by just building uh, the Tree Man Ancient or the Durthu in another way. Uh, and the uh, you get a core unit that is a very good base core unit with the Dryads, and you also get the Dreek and the Revenants that you could build uh, something else. And that tells me... Uh... So, using ratings, you get a mix of Warhammer Age of Sigma uh, and Warhammer Fantasy Battles uh, miniatures in these. I think the Dryads and the Tree Lords are from... Fantasy and Drika and the Revenants are from Age of Sigma. I would say most of these are usable, uh, and I'd say all of them are definitely proxyable into something that is usable. It's an okay base for an army, um, if, especially if you want to go really tree-themed. Uh, it has great savings, though. Um, I think one of the better, if not the best, of all these boxes. All in all, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Last of all, we have the Stormcast Eternals, uh, which don't really have an equivalent in Warhammer Fantasy. You get a Knight Relictor, 3 Annihilators, 10 Vanquishers, and 10 Vigilers, and 2 Storm Drake Guard or Knight Draconis. They are completely useless in Warhammer Fantasy. So, value. The Knight Relictor is £21, the Annihilators is £32.50, Vanquishers £37.50, Vigilers £37.50, Stormdrake Guards £70 for a total of £198.50 or 50 quid. Sorry, for a total of £198.50. Savings on this is £58.50. Uh, or 29.5%, so not too bad. But I would say these are completely unusable in Warhammer Fantasy. Of course, you could proxy these, you could use them for something else. I'm sure somebody has made a, a fan uh, list for these so that you could actually use them in Warhammer Fantasy. If nobody has, maybe I should. Um, but as, as it stands, this would not be uh, a good way to start a Warhammer Fantasy battle army. I'd give it a 1 out of 10. Right, so what have we seen? I think it's we've seen that it's still clearly viable to start playing Warhammer Fantasy Battles. These boxes are great bases for it. Uh, most of the battle forces are useful in one way or another for Warhammer Fantasy Battles. But, you know, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.